Look, Angel. <laughs> good dog, good dog. Speaking of dogs, I'm going to talk about how to take your dog on a canoe trip. Yeah, are you all right? Are you all right? It's <laughs> my third dog. Uh, every time I lose a dog, meaning the dog dies, not actually lose the dog, I, uh, I tell myself not to get another dog, and yet I do. <laughs> I've always tripped with dogs that I can remember. I had Bailey Springer Spaniel. I had Ellie a Springer Spaniel. Man, it was uh, tough going. I think Ellie got seasick. Ellie, you okay? <laughs> She's not feeling very well right now. I didn't think a dog could get seasick, but I think she is. Woo! And now Angel, which is a mix between a Border Collie and a Golden Retriever. Oh, I hate when you take me camping, Kevin. Oh, I'm miserable. Give me more room in the tarp, please, Kevin. Give me more room in the tarp. And they've all gone tripping with me ever since they're a pup, okay? And uh, so, so many people say, well, like, is it worth it? Should you do it? Uh, I have all these uh, issues and problems and stuff. There's no real answer to this, but I'm gonna give you my experience with what I do with my dog or my dogs or what I do with my dogs. So uh, I got this little sand spit here and got a fire going uh, just to warm up a bit, actually to warm Ellie up. She's got the shivers for some reason. I think it's really important is that the dog has to be well trained, okay? It, it's not the dog's issue if the dog poops on a campsite. It's not the dog's issue if it goes after someone else's dog on a portage. It is, it's, it's, it's not, I've seen this, it's not the dog's issue that jumps out of the canoe and, and goes after a moose, right? It's not the dog's issue if it eats someone else's food out of their, their, uh, their uh, backpack on the trail, which just happened to me, oh my lord. You have to train the dog, okay? When you introduce the dog to the canoe, make sure you're not anxious about it. Dogs feel the anxiety. It doesn't matter what you're doing, but the dog knows you're anxious. If the dog knows you're anxious, the dog won't like the canoe. Another day, another dollar. <laughs> it's gonna be a muggy one today, doggy. Gotta make it happy, you gotta make it joyful, make it make a good experience. Just like introducing a child to the canoe. But it also has to be very comfortable too. And I find Especially her mix, she's got a border collie cross, or she's got a border collie cross. So I can run her all day, but if I don't exercise her mind, she's just like, boah, squirrely, right? So as soon as I get in the canoe, I go, go to the mat. I go to the dollar store, glue a mat inside the canoe, or get one of those blue foamies cut in half, glue it to the canoe, or just carry it with you if you don't want to glue it to the canoe. But then it, it gives a place for the dog to go to in the canoe. So if you're going down rapids and you're like, oh gosh, I don't want to tip over, you know, Angel, go to the mat, go to the mat. If it's really windy and wavy and you want the dog to settle down, go to the mat. The dog wants to do that. It's a comfort zone, okay? That works, it works for me. It all depends on the size of the dog, the hyperness of the dog, the, the breed of the dog, but that works. The other is that dog is going to get sunburned. It's sitting in the boat all day and you don't think about it. Everybody thinks the dog is going to be fine because it's this wild creature. Um, well, you know. uh, it's going to get sunburned on the nose. It's going to get dehydrated, things like that. And it sounds simple enough, but all I do is I get a dollar store umbrella and I attach this to the side of my canoe. In fact, the one canoe I trip with a lot, which <laughs> she's afraid of it. <laughs> Right away, it's an umbrella. Um, is I got a PCV pipe uh, just about this big and I shove it in there. Or I got these Billy Bob Junji Bobs. I can't pronounce these things, but I use these to strap the umbrella onto the side of the canoe. Yeah, it's uh, a little bulky. Um, it's worth it. I actually use this as a <laughs> makeshift sail at times too. So excellent, excellent. Now that is a good tip. Singing in the rain, just singing in the rain. All right, all right. Okay, while we're at mats, uh, I bring this mat as well. This is something for her to go to at the campsite inside the tent. Uh, a little small, but it's compactable. And, and I also can use this in the canoe as well if I don't have a mat glued down. The idea of it is she has somewhere to go. The command mat, go to your mat, okay? All right, what else, what else, what else? Yeah, so my, my dog really doesn't go all over the place in the canoe. It just sort of enjoys the ride.
portages or everything else. The dog wants to work, especially this dog. It wants to work. It wants to be given a job. Let's see if I can find it. I got so much stuff in here. A couple things I do on the portage. Number one is I give it its own pack. Are you down, Kibble? <laughs> she does not like her pack. And the bugs are getting to her. But Kyla, has Ellie figured out how to take the pack off? Yes. <laughs> Have you figured out how to take your pack off? <laughs> and its food goes in here in uh, waterproof containers, okay? So it carries its food, its treats and things like that. The leash goes on it. As soon as she sees the pack, she knows we're going to do something and she knows she's going to get a treat. I hate to say it, but my dog is treat friendly, okay? So I'll give it the command, put the pack on, and it's, it's a lot better. The dog gets really excited by doing the portage. A couple other things I do in the portage. If I'm in a really busy park, like a Gonquin, Killarney, Quetico, um, Banff, Jasper, whatever. If it's a busy area where you're going to probably meet someone else on the portage, put the dog on the leash. Okay, my dog is fantastic off the leash. She listens to every command. She's not going to go anywhere, but people don't own that. Uh, also, if another dog is aggressive and is off the leash, then you can say, well, my dog is on the leash. Or, and I generally do this, if I take Ellie on a trip, I'm not going to go to a busy park with Ellie. Ellie loves being off the leash, right? So I'm going to go to crown land areas where I'm not going to see anybody. I know I'm not going to see anybody. However, I might, and she's black, and if I was on the portage and I saw a black creature coming towards me, I would think it's a bear. So I put a bandana around her, so it's not a black <laughs> bear, it's a dog with a bandana. I also put a bell on her, so not only can they hear the bell coming as a warning, I know where the dog, a dog is as well, so I can just whistle and the dog comes back. Oh, and speaking of that, if I can find it, oh well. I bet, oh, there's another umbrella I use. Oh, yes, going back to the boat, PFD. And you're like, that's embarrassing, Kevin. You're, you're putting a, a PFD on, on, your, on your dog. What's really cool is you grab it, pick the dog up, and put it in the boat. <laughs> that's the greatest thing ever. So, a dog PFD. It's made by Ruffaware, and I got a lot of their products. They're a really, really good company. I'm going all over the place because I got a grab bag of stuff. It's like a treasure trunk, something like that. I don't know, what was, what was that guy called? Um, that had a treasure chest, bring all the stuff out. Um, oh, not Mr. Rogers, not Mr. Was it Mr. Rogers? No, no, Casey, um, he had, they had a little dog. I think Casey was a dog. Oh, he was a Canadian. Mr. Dress Up, Mr. Dress Up. This is a friendly alien with a funny necktie. Okay, um, I bring this. Uh, uh, on the trip. If I'm going interior and I want to reduce my weight, I'll bring something smaller and I'll show you. But basically, this is her well, little blanket. It's like a, her own sleeping bag. I know you're like, you're kidding, Kevin? Are you kidding? Again, I put this in the canoe, uh, not in the canoe, sorry. I put this outside of the campsite or I put this in the tent and I go, go to your mat and she goes to this. And if it does get cold, because we're going to go on a trip soon and it was like minus one last night. So, so it, it will keep it warm. Okay. And she's a bit of a suck with the cold. She actually hates me taking her winter camping. But that's another story. So, uh, yeah, she has her own little sleeping bag and it makes her comfortable. And when I say comfortable, I mean physically comfortable, yes, but also mentally comfortable. She has something to go to. All right. And Oliver's quite comfortable, so. Yeah, we can show Oliver right there. There you go. Oliver, you having fun? Go away, Kevin. We should have just stayed at your house. It was nice and cozy. <laughs> Why do you take me to these places? Christine? I've told you time and time again, he's an idiot. Oliver and I have no. a special relationship. <laughs> it's he a poodle that wears booties and a jacket. And last night you're like, as long as Oliver has his booties and his jacket and his sweater, we'll be fine. And he's fine. He is fine. You're, there you go. Yeah. He's totally fine. <laughs> you have to come here. Here, there it is. Here's a cookie. There it is. Aha! I knew it. All right. 
Other thing I take on the Portage, I attach it onto my own whistle and fire rod, is a dog whistle. Watch this. Good girl. Good girl. It works. <laughs> Good girl. Okay, a uh, dog whistle, and if she gets out of control and she's going after something, I've trained her, if I blow this, she comes back to me immediately, okay? And you said she gets a treat for that, but she didn't. She didn't even look for a treat this time. Don't say the word treat either. Spell it out. Uh, if you don't want to take that, take one of these, these uh, reflector ponchos, SOL, a bivy sack or something like that. Uh, they're really lightweight. Um, you can get this at any outdoor store, really cheap. So a little lightweight, but you know, if the dog gets like, cold, at least you got something, okay? Or in really cold conditions, meaning late fall, she has her own jacket. And you're like, you kidding, Kevin? Are you kidding? Yes, yeah, she has her own jacket. Uh, she doesn't like the cold. I know that. So, here you go. Oh yeah, does I show you the containers that she drinks out? No, I don't, I didn't, no, no. So these things are really handy to take. I generally only take one, one for the food. Okay, this one, or this one is even compact. I usually don't take the other one for the water. I mean, you're right beside a lake or a river, there's the water. And I know some dog owners won't let the dog drink water out in the woods. Well, if it's in a lake or a stream, the dog's gonna drink that water anyway. It's gonna drink puddle water. And it's not good for it. As long as it has all the shots and things of like that, it should be fine. Okay, speaking of that though, do not forget this. First aid kit for your dog. You can have your own first aid kit, but have your own kit for the dog. Different things in here. I know if you take Tylenol or give Tylenol to a dog, it will actually get really sick from it. So bring aspirin, bring, um, uh, mm, I think here I got them here. Horse bandages. This is a bandage for its leg to, to, uh, to, oh, and a sock. I put a sock in here. So I use this, put the sock over so she doesn't get at the wound. Gauze and things like that. I have a whole list of stuff that my vet helped me create in the first aid kit. So go to your vet. They'll love it, by the way, if you actually go to your vet and say, can you help me create a first aid kit for my dog taking out on a canoe trip? They'll just love it. Probably do it for free too. <laughs> my, my vet did. And, um, uh, I pulled it right down below so you can actually see the entire list of the medicine and the bandages and things like that so I won't go off rambling but make your own kit for your dog. Man bugs. Okay you can't put DEET on the dog because the dog licks its fur and DEET is not good and it's consuming the, the DEET. Right dog? Yes. Are you all right? <laughs> you can use uh, something like Natropel. Um, I personally use this. I'm not telling you to use it. I, I, I read what's in here and it, I don't think it's going to hurt the dog, but what I really generally do is I don't put it on the dog, I spray the bandana with it. So again, the dog's not licking this stuff. The biggest thing though is I never take my dog on a canoe trip in the spring. The bugs will drive her nuts. She's black too, and the black fur just attracts. Black, uh, by the way, dark, dark colors attracts insects. Bright colors do not. But she's gonna be driven insane, especially with like black flies and the belly and stuff like that. I just don't take her. Ellie's still a bit of upset about the whole day. <laughs> Do you want to tell everybody why she's upset? Because she got bitten and eaten alive and she puked in the boat. Yeah. Deer flies. Nasty. I've never seen deer flies so bad in my life. There were so many deer flies on the portages along the Petawa River. Ellie got bitten so bad she started vomiting afterwards and uh, she's still a little bit upset about it. But um, other than that, it was a good day. <laughs> Later on, the deer flies come out, but you know, it's such a good time to be out. So uh, she snaps out and eats them. That's all fine. How's it going, doggy? Well, Kevin, if one more deer fly goes after my nose, I'm going to snap. I'm telling you, I'm going to snap like you've never seen a dog snap before. You got him? <laughs> Good girl. I have a bug screen that I use and the, and the dog comes in. In fact, as soon as I get to camp, the dog 
barks at the bug screen, basically telling me, put this thing up now. I want it up now. What's wrong with you? I want it up. I really think my dog is very intelligent. She's a uh, half a uh, golden retriever and half um, border collie. The border collie makes her very smart. The other half, I'm not sure. <laughs> We're in the bug shelter. She's being driven nuts by the deer flies. So I put the bug shelter up for her. She comes inside. Look, her head is sticking out and she's snapping up the deer flies around her head. The other is, um, I bring somewhere in here is a fly swatter because later on in the summer season, you'll get those stable flies, uh, those ankle biters. And there's like a house fly, but it's got two, two little white um, dots in their eyes. They're called ankle biters because they go for things that smell and stink <laughs> uh, which would be your feet but yeah they really hurt and they're impossible to kill and dogs hate them so the only way i can kill them is a fly swatter so i bring a fly swatter for myself and the dog all right i did the leash thing i did the gear thing uh the food i bring for her she gets treats all the time she gets cuddles <laughs> do not bring a dog to ward off bears that's probably a huge video on its own, but why not, Kevin? Majority of dogs, there are a couple breeds that are bred to actually battle with bears, but most likely your dog is not one of those. What will happen is, man, I hate to say it, but if you got a small dog too, that bear could be coming in your camp to eat your dog. Heard about it, seen it, it happens, okay? The, the bear is like, hmm, that looks tasty. The dog is gonna yip at it. It's gonna, you know, just like us, we're gonna make itself look bigger and stronger, whatever. But um, what might happen if the dog's off the leash, it will actually do a defensive thing, try to protect you and run after the bear. And it's not gonna win. So the dog's gonna run back after you with the bear. It's happened. It's happened to me twice in Northern Quebec while I was guiding. It wasn't pleasant at all. Yeah, so do not bring a dog to ward off bears. They will warn you of a bear. Uh, or anything else, but it's not going to protect you from a bear. That's my own viewpoint, okay? So you might differ with some of the stuff, but this is my own viewpoint and through my experience, whatever that is. All right, what else I got? What else I got? What else? I think that's it. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Should I take my dog canoeing? Good Lord, yes. Uh, just be a good dog owner and make sure you don't do silly things to upset other people that don't have dogs because you have to remember when someone doesn't have a dog they don't get it if you're, if you're not a dog owner they, <laughs> those people don't understand about dog life dog activities two dogs sniffing each other and things like that <laughs> anyway bring your dog on a canoe trip i think it covered everything i'm not sure let's go paddling dog oh all right Are you okay, Ollie? Are you alright? You a little cold? Oh, he's got the shivers. <laughs> he's okay. Are you glad you went camping with us? Turn the camera off, Kevin. I'm, I'm ashamed. I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed of myself. Turn the camera off. <laughs> Angel, what do you think of that? I've been camping worse than this. One supper.